So first off, what is sidechain compression? It's when you chain given elements of a track together, and when one of them sounds, it compresses or squashes the element of the track that you choose to be squashed. So oftentimes you'll sidechain the melodic parts of the track to the kick, so that when the kick sounds, the melodic parts duck out. So why would you use this technique? This will add depth and motion to your tracks, making them pump with a certain forward moving motion. Also in the example that I just showed you, the kick is perceived as being louder than it actually is, but in reality, it's just pushing the other elements out of the way. So our ears perceive that as being louder and they're just so used to hearing this technique that at this point, especially with electronic music, it's like an essential for all producers uh, at this point, in my opinion. I did a comparison between the SP404 and the MPC-1 a couple videos back. Here it is. There's one aspect that I brought up about how the MPC-1 has actual sidechain compression in it. It's called Mother Ducker, hilariously. <laughs> The MK2 doesn't, but after some exploring, there are some workarounds to get close to that sidechain effect, and depending on the rhythms that you're using, you could make it sound pretty much identical. Obviously, there's the 303 vinyl sim, which has that sort of sidechain effect, depending on how intense you use it. There's also the OG 404 compression, which has a similar effect, but not quite as good as the 303, in my opinion. And then there's this hack that emulates sidechain compression pretty much exactly. But like I said, depending on the rhythms that you're using, and that's something we're gonna be getting into in this video. I've done quite a few videos on the 404 MK2 already, and I've gotten some good questions in the comments of those videos. So question one is from BJ since birth great name so you could add effects to bus three and four that are global like then you could add the effects on individual pads to the bus one and two that's exactly right shift effect settings and now you have bus three and four here that are currently empty so these are like master effects you could add anything you want here oftentimes i'll go with 303 vinyl sim and then there's a second tab here for bus four as well for a second effects these i wouldn't use for individual tracks or like performance like effects because you have to menu dive to get to them buses one and two are accessible by just hitting bus effects right so you can jump back and forth add effects to each of these and go in and out of them that way. In fact, here's a video all you need to know about SB404 MK2 multi effects. Question two is from L1 Masky. L1 Mask or EI1 Mask. Can you use the SB404 also as a MIDI sequencer for external gear? I think there's a reason why a lot of the total overview videos of the MK2, they haven't really touched that much on MIDI. It's because they're still working some of that out, so. I guess more on that soon. Question number three is from Idle Time Rap. Uh, dumb question. There are no dumb questions. Did they send you it with the skin or do you have advice on how to do that? So there's tons of companies that are already making skins for the MK2. I got this skin directly from Roland. It's, I put it on pretty nicely, but there's a little bubble here as you can see. And the color is kind of scraping off here on the edges, which is a bit of a bummer. I might have to reskin it eventually, but something to consider. Shout out to Crema Cafe. I know they're making skins for the MK2 as well, and they're super nice. So I might actually contact them next. We'll see. Today's sponsor is DistroKid. They are the coolest music distribution platform around. They've actually made it possible for artists to donate a portion of their streaming income or all of it if they want to a charity of their choice. So more on that later in this video. So we'll start off by taking a stab at 303 Vinyl Sim. It does have a sidechain quality to it. It reacts differently depending on how you use it though. If you perform a track or sequence something wherein samples are being triggered within the MK2, then it has a more pure effect because it's reacting to all of the samples being triggered individually. Whereas if I add a full on bounced master track, it has that warmth, but the slight sidechain effect isn't quite there. So it, it still is pumping, but it gets a little bit stuffy. Like you're losing the drums. So like I said, it's got that same warmth, but the compression is bouncing off of one track as opposed to individual samples within a track. So a big difference there. Let's play around with that. Maybe some flutter as well. Tons of noise. Ugh, maybe too much. Oh yeah. So 
go lo-fi. I don't like what it's doing to that snare though, to the to the rim snare. Let's turn it off. Like that's what it sounds like without it. You know? So you might be sacrificing something if you put it on too loud. Another thing that I should be clear on, so I'm finger drumming these parts at this point. If you sequence this exact pattern into the pattern sequencer, it would react the exact same way. Because in both examples, patterns and samples are being sequenced in real time. So we'll do the same thing with OG404 compression now. Let's head over and find it. Compressor. There it is. This does arguably have a sidechain effect to it, but it's more of a transient shaper than anything else. If you're familiar with software, it's kind of similar to RC20's DS10 transient shaper. Depending on the track that you're using this one on, it could get a little bit stuffy and crowded. In my experience, if I'm using it on something with complex patterns or even like a four on the floor kick sort of thing, like maybe house music, it gets a little bit nasty. So it's, it's really crushing the drums. Keep in mind I have it like fully blasted 100, uh, sorry, ratio is at 100, attack at 100, sustain at zero. So I'm really emphasizing the transients. Let's be a little bit more moderate with that. Let's just put it, cut that in half, see what that does. Yeah, so now the drums come out even more because they're not being crushed. Much better. I'm also not crazy about this hi-hat sound, in fact. Let's change it. Hi-hat, pitch speed. Let's bring the sustain up to 25, maybe. Attack to 75. Bit more ratio, so a little bit more intense. Let's take it off completely. Yeah. So depending on how you use it, it's adding some pump for sure, but I'm not sure you'd consider that side chain compression. You're, you're kind of getting close to it. So this is an option. The problem with this one is that the more attack that you add, the more crushed and like stuffy your drums get within your groove. That heavily compressed 404 sound, and if that's something you like or a sound that you're going for, that's great. If you use the 404 compressor in a different way, we would love to hear that. So let us know in the comments. Now let's take a look at this hack that I was talking about. It has to do with this envelope right here. So shift envelope. Now we have attack, hold, release. Let's bring that attack down. Maybe release as well. Really soften up the sample. I'm gonna do that with every sample, every one of them. When you chop samples with the 404, they get a little bit choppy, like you hear that click at the beginning. This is actually just a great technique to get rid of that click as well. If you just want to make a small adjustment to the attack and release, let's try that. Right, so that, that click is gone. I'm gonna make sure that there's no other effects on here. Yeah, the compressor's still on, so I'm gonna take that off. And this is what it sounds like, dry, rolling off the attack and release. Let's check it out. So like I said, it depends on the rhythms that you're using. It actually doesn't really work for four on the floor. Let's say I was doing. Okay, also I'm gonna add 303 back to this. Let's do a combination. Add a bit more compression to the mix. There we go. So I think a combination of both might be the best answer. That sounds like sidechain. You even 
even have control over how intense the sidechain is. So if you want to go back to envelope, you could roll this attack back. Right, so now it's a bit more subtle. Let's go subtle with these top four. I'm gonna go as far as saying that that is sidechain compression. The problem is that you're locked into certain patterns if you want like that exact authentic sidechain compression. But even if it's not the same creatively, if you use this technique on your beats within the MK2, it might take you in a different creative direction. In fact, let's pull up a slower beat. I believe this one. Oh, that's so compressed. Let's bring that compression down a bit. Bring it to maybe 50. So compressed. Do the exact same thing right here. That's a really noisy melodic sample, by the way. We're getting sidechain. We're also getting samples that sound like they have the attack rolled off. So it's an interesting creative effect. At this point, this is as close as we're gonna get. Maybe in the future, they're going to release a sidechain option. Here's hoping. If you want the authentic thing though, you're gonna have to go with either a DAW or an MPC sort of deal where you can specifically choose the tracks that you want to sidechain to the kick or whatever else. In any case, I hope that these workarounds spark some creativity in your beats. So let's talk about how you're able to donate part of your streaming income to charity through DistroKid. So this is one way that you could help those who are less fortunate as an artist or producer. I know what you're thinking, like the state of making income through streaming were the ones that need help. <laughs> but if you are in a position where you can make a difference, then you have an option to do that through DistroKid. It's called Artists for Change and you can find it at distrokid.com slash Artist for change. Here's a list of charities that you're able to donate to, and when you choose one, you're given an email. From here, head over to the single that you'd like to split with and select choose a collaborator. From there, you enter the given email address, and that's it. A lot of artists are not in a position to help, but if you are, distrokid.com slash artist for change. This is one of many features that DistroKid has to offer. In case you're not a member, there is a 7% discount in the description. There's also an affiliate link for the MK2 in the description, so if you're on the edge of buying, maybe use that. It's one of the best ways of supporting this channel. Hope you subscribe if you found this video useful. I put out content all of the time on all of the platforms. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. I make an effort to get back to everyone's comments, so I'll get back to you. We're done here. Thanks guys for watching.